Today we're going to learn about density modification. In a diffraction experiment, we can directly measure the intensities of diffraction spots. However, the phase information is lost. Both phases and intensities are needed to calculate an electron density map. Initial phases can be obtained using experimental phasing methods or molecular replacement. In both cases, the initial phases may be inaccurate because of experimental errors, low signal to noise, or model bias. Therefore, it is usually necessary to improve the phases by exploiting our prior knowledge about electron density distributions in crystals. With the same data, poor phases lead to a noisy map and good phases give a clear map. Density modification is improving the phases to obtain a clear map. Look at these two maps. The one on the left is noisy and the one on the right is clear. We can list things that are different in the clear map. A flat solvent region. This region is featureless because the water molecules in the crystal are in different places in each unit cell and we just see the average. Clear density that looks like a protein. We are going to improve the noisy map to create the clear map using two key facts. First, we know what a good map looks like. Second, and most importantly, if we improve the phases by improving the map anywhere, we automatically improve the map everywhere. Here's our strategy. Identify places in the noisy map where we know how to improve the density. We might be pretty sure that the density in the upper right is flat. Now we can ask a question like, what phases that are consistent with our experimental measurements would lead to flat density in the upper right? Those phases can lead to a map that is better everywhere. So now, how do we do this in practice? We are going to see how this is done in the procedure known as statistical or maximum likelihood density modification. Let's look at a one-dimensional example that has all the details of statistical density modification. Let's imagine a crystal with one protein atom, the peak in this 1D curve, and a flat solvent, the flat part of the curve. Now let's think of this curve as a Fourier sum of sines and cosines, just like crystallography where the map is a sum of Fourier terms. We are going to figure out the phase of one Fourier term given two things. One, the phases of all the other Fourier terms, and two, our expectation that the solvent is flat. Let's take out one Fourier term. This will make a ripple in the map. Notice that the solvent now has that ripple in it and that the protein atom is distorted. Now we are going to figure out the phase of the Fourier term that we took out. We are going to notice what the solvent looks like when we add the term back with each possible phase. Let's start with the poor map with a ripple. If we add the Fourier term back in with the correct phase, the solvent region becomes flat. The Fourier term cancels the ripple. Notice that the protein region is now perfect again. If we add the Fourier term back in with the wrong phase, the solvent region becomes even more rippled. Now comparing the maps with the two possible phases and only looking in the region of the solvent, it is obvious which is correct. We have just accomplished two things. We have used our expectation about the flatness of the solvent to identify the phase of this one Fourier term. And this has improved the map in the protein region. We have just transferred information from one part of the map to another. In the real world, we don't know the phases of the other Fourier terms exactly. Instead of getting a single correct phase, we get map-based probabilities for each possible phase. We have experimental phase information as well. We can combine these to get our density modification phase probability for this one Fourier term. Finally, we use our new phase information to calculate a map. To summarize the key points, we know what a good map looks like. If we can improve the phases by improving the map anywhere, we automatically improve the map everywhere. Density modification transfers information from one part of the map to another. If you have questions or comments, you are welcome to contact us at help at phoenixonline.org or tutorials at phoenixonline.org.